Welcome to Chem Exam Explained. In today's video, we will be looking at Cape Chemistry 2023 Unit 2, Module 2, Analytical Methods and Separation Techniques. Let's begin. Number two, a solution of potassium manganate 7 is standardized by titration against the primary standard ethane dioic acid. The standard solution of potassium manganate 7 is used to determine the percentage of iron 2 in compound R. Part A. List three characteristics of ethane dioic acid that make it a suitable primary standard. 1. High purity. 2. Readily soluble in water and forms of stable solutions. This is simply saying that it should be readily soluble in the titration medium. Three, have high relative molecular mass. Four, reproducible titration results. Five, high stability towards air. Part B, in preparing the solution of ethane dioic acid for titration against the manganate seven solution, Two pieces of laboratory apparatus with high degree of accuracy are required. Name these two pieces of apparatus. These two pieces are analytical balance, which is used to weigh the mass of solid, and the volumetric flask, which is used to make up the solution. Now, let me just simply say that ethane dioic acid is the same thing as oxalic acid, H2C2O4. Let me put the formula for ethane doic acid, which is the same thing as oxalic acid. 2C. 25 cm cube of aqueous solution of R requires 24.80 cm cube of 0 0.02 mol per dm cube manganate 7 for a complete reaction. 2 part C. 25 cm cube of aqueous solution of R requires 24.80 cm cube of 0 0.02 moles per dm cube manganate 7 for complete reaction. The equation for the reaction is, and you can examine the equation here, and then we're going to do some calculation. Now, the first part of the calculation requires the number of moles of the manganate ion. Let's examine the information that we have so that we can find the moles of the manganate ion, MnO4 minus. We have the volume. Okay, so the volume is 24.80 cm cube, and we have the molar concentration of 0 0.02 moles per dm cube. Remember, when doing titration questions, you must convert cm cube to dm cube simply by dividing by 1,000. So we're going to use our formula. Now to use the formula, we're saying that moles equal molar concentration times volume. And so 0 0.02 moles per dm cube times 0 0.0248 dm cube gives us the mole of 4.96 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. Part 2, we are required to find the number of moles of Iron 2 plus in 25 cm cube of aqueous R. In order to find the moles of iron 2 in 25 cm cube of aqueous R, we must examine again the equation. And you'll see that the mole ratio between iron 2 plus and manganate ion MnO4 minus is 5 to 1. So we're going to use that relationship to find the number of moles of iron 2 plus in 25 cm cube of aqueous solution of R. So we write the mole ratio between iron 2 plus and MnO4 minus is 5 to 1. Therefore, the moles of iron 2 is 5 times the moles of the manganate 7 ion, which is 4.96 times 10 to the minus 4. Our moles of iron 2 plus is now 2.48 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Moving on to part 3. 
we are to calculate the number of moles of iron 2 in 1 dm cube of R. Now, if you look at what the question is asking for, moles in 1 dm cube, they're simply asking you for the molar concentration. So again, we can use the formula. Moles equal molar concentration times volume. Then we make molar concentration the subject of the formula. And then we input the values in the calculator and we get our molar concentration to be 0 0.0992 moles per dm cube. Now, if you want to use the proportion method, you could simply say the moles that you calculated, 2.48 times 10 to the minus 3 moles is in 25 cm cube. So how much moles is in 1,000 cm cube? Once you cross multiply, your answer is going to be 0 0.0992 moles in 1,000 cm cube, which is simply saying 0 0.0992 moles in 1 dm cube. Part 4. We are to calculate the mass of iron 2 in 1 dm cube of R. So this question is simply asking us to find the mass concentration. So we can use the formula mass concentration equal molar concentration times molar mass. We had the molar concentration from above and we know the molar mass of iron to be 56. So we can use mass conch equal 0 0.0992 moles per dm cube times 56 grams per mole. And that will give us a mass concentration of 5.56 grams per dm cube. Now note, if you use the molar mass of iron to be 55.8 grams per mole, your answer should be 5.54 grams per dm cube. So it depends on what value you use for your molar mass of iron. The percentage of iron 2 in the compound. So we're to calculate the percentage of iron 2 in the compound. So what we're going to do is simply use the mass concentration that we calculated in part 4 and divide it by the mass concentration of R, which is 40.90 grams per dm cube. Then we multiply that by 100 to get our answer in percentage. So the percentage of iron is equal to mass conch of the pure iron over the mass conch of R times 100. The mass conch of the pure iron was calculated to be 5.56 grams per dm cube divided by the mass conch of R, which is 40.90 grams per dm cube and then we multiply it by 100, and our answer is 13.6%. Part D, a variety of chromatographic methods can be used to separate mixtures. D part one, state the meaning of the term retention time as applied to gas liquid chromatography, GLC. Now, retention time is the time taken between the point of injection on the GLC and the appearance of a peak on the chromatogram. D part two, distinguish between a stationary phase and mobile phase as used in chromatography. Now, a stationary phase is a solid or solid support that holds the analyte components attracted to it and slows the movement while the mobile phase is the agent used to move the analyte sample over the stationary phase. D part three, give one example of a stationary phase commonly used in GLC. An example would be a long chain hydrocarbon supported on a inert solid. Example, hexane supported on silica or alumina. D part four, Give one example of the use of chromatographic methods of separation in industry. Now, I gave you a few here. You could choose any one. So we have pesticide analysis, forensic testing, purification of natural products, monitoring of air or water pollution, blood and urine analysis for athletes, 
analysis of fuels, analysis of alcohol beverages, and analysis of oil spill determination. Part E1, define the term retention factor RF. Now, RF retention factor is a distance moved by a component over the distance moved by the solvent. E part two. Samples of two different brands of black ink are separated into their constituent parts using paper chromatography. Both samples contain a red dye. In the first sample, the solvent travels 7.54 centimeter while the red dye travels 4.67 centimeter. In the second sample, the red dye travels 3.31 centimeter, while the solvent travels 5.34 centimeter. Calculate the RF value for the red dye in each of the two samples. Now for the first sample, the RF value would be the distance traveled by the component in the red dye over the distance traveled by the solvent. So that would be 4.67 divided by 7.54, which gives us a value of 0 0.619. For the second sample, the distance traveled by the component is 3.31, and the distance traveled by the solvent is 5.34. Is 5 and this gives us a RF value of 0 0.619. Now take note that both RF values are the same, even though they are from different samples. So let's look at part three. Deduce whether the same red dye is used to make both types of ink. Give a reason for your answer. So the answer is the same red dye was used to make both types of ink because the RF value for both is 0 0.619. So as long as the RF values are the same, then they are made from the same dye. F part one, explain the term solvent extraction. Now solvent extraction is a method to separate components based on their relative solubilities in two different immiscible liquids, usually water and an organic solvent. F part two, state one use of solvent extraction. The question requires one use of solvent extraction, but we're looking at several and you can choose any one. Extraction of organic compounds from water is the first one. The first one is extraction of organic compounds from water. The second answer could be analysis of the relative solubility of compounds in fats and aqueous solutions. And another possible answer could be test how readily pollutants are taken up by groundwater. Part three, describe what is meant by the term partition coefficient as it relates to solvent extraction. Now partition coefficient K is a constant of the solute concentration in each solvent at equilibrium. And here you see an equation where X aqueous produces X organic. And we have our reversible arrow because it is at equilibrium. Now the K, which is a partition coefficient, is the concentration of the product over the concentration of the reactant. Now let me remind you that if the equation was flipped and we had X organic producing X aqueous, then the K now would be different. The K would now be equal to X aqueous over X organic. But that depends on what the equation is. In this case, the equation is going from X aqueous to X organic. So our partition coefficient K is equal to X organic over X aqueous. Part four, under certain conditions, the partition coefficient of Substance Q between methyl benzene and water is 12. Q being more soluble in methyl benzene than water. Determine the mass of Q that will be extracted from 200 cm cube of aqueous solution containing 
8 grams of Q by shaking it with 50 cm cube of methyl benzene. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that we understand what the question is saying. And we're going to pick out the important information. So here I have a sketch. And this sketch is showing you my separating funnel with my immiscible liquids. Now I have 50 cm cube of methyl benzene here at the top and 200 cm cube of water. And in the 200 cm cube of water, I have eight grams of substance Q. So to start the answer, we're going to say, let the amount of Q extracted by methyl benzene be X. Now you could use any letter you, you choose, but we're, we're using X in this case. And the amount remaining in the water be eight minus X. Meaning, whatever you remove from the eight grams will be left back. And you are moving some of the eight grams into the 50 cm cube. So we look at our equation, the concentration of water, aqueous, produces the methyl benzene. So we set up an equilibrium equation. Our K, which is our partition coefficient, is equal to the concentration of methyl benzene over the concentration of water. So we're going to use the methyl benzene to extract substance Q from the water. Now remember that the question told you that Q is more soluble in methyl benzene than in water. So once you start to shake and Q comes in contact with the methyl benzene, some of it will be extracted from the water into the methyl benzene. So to set up the calculation, we're saying that X would be extracted from the water into the methyl benzene, hence X over 50, divided by the eight minus X. So this eight minus X is suggesting that the X amount will be removed from the water and be placed into the methyl benzene. And of course, that is over the 200, which is the 200 represents the volume of the water. Now, everything is equal to 12. Why? Because the question told you that the partition coefficient was 12. So we simply now apply some math. And so we have X divided by 50, divided by eight minus X over 200 equal 12, which is simply written like this. We are going to simplify the equation. And so 50 into itself goes one and 50 into 200 gives you four. So we now have four X over eight minus X equal 12. Applying math again, four X equal 12 times eight minus X. Four X equals 12 times eight, which is 96 minus 12 X. Now we're going to put all the X's on the same side. So we now have four X plus 12 X equal 96. And now we have 16 X equal 96. So to make X the subject of the formula, we now have 96 divided by 16. So X equals six. This is simply saying that six grams of Q was removed from water. So therefore, Eight was our original number. Six was removed, leaving two grams in the water. So our answer is six. And this brings us to the end of module two, analytical methods and separation techniques.